mercies never fail how good is he he saves oh he rescues he redeems oh his grace has kept his free how good is he
cry aloud to honor you, to honor you. to see you for our Harvest uh, All Age uh, service. Great that we can gather into our auditorium. Uh, mixture of ages here. Great to have the children back in uh, with us as we worship God together. Welcome if you're joining us online. And uh, well, we're in the um, Harvest Kitchen. If he can do it on Saturday, <laughs> I thought I could do it on on Sunday, and uh, so we're going to have a go. We're going to do some uh, harvest soup making, uh, potato and onion soup making, and uh, that's where we're going this morning. But more importantly, more importantly, we come in worship and thanksgiving to God, our, our faithful creator who provides for us. So um, welcome to the Sunday Harvest Kitchen. That would be a great kitchen, wouldn't it? This is, this is a great kitchen I've, I've created here. And um, on, on the back here, um, I know we can do a little camera shot in there. The, the camera people are going to go mad at me today. I'm going to jump everywhere around. doesn't matter. But here are some of Harvest gifts that people are bringing as we worship God today. Uh, they're going to the food bank, Joe, aren't they? They are. The food bank are after Pringles, sponge puddings, tinned fruit, tinned custard... <laughs> Tea bags, coffee, hot chocolate, tinned meat, tinned vegetables, and shampoo in particular. We so, have some shampoo in particular. So that's what we've got. And uh, all financial donations, if it's easier for you to do it that way. But this is going to really needy families, um, so it'd be Great. good to think of them this harvest time. And people have been giving their gifts, and we're collecting them downstairs. And there's a few, as I say, on our, our harvest kitchen shelves there. Oh, well, OK, to make a harvest soup, you, you need, apparently, pots like this, and... And, and things like this, and uh, uh, we're going to get to the end and, and hopefully going to use the ladle, because that's what one of those are called, apparently, and, uh, and you need, if you're going to do potato and onion soup, you need some potatoes. So, Joe, there's some potatoes there. I, I'm not telling you what to do. <laughs> wouldn't dream of doing that in life. <laughs> Joe, my wife, you're just wondering who she is. But we're going to peel some potatoes. Oh, that's great. You're very good at doing that. I wonder that's, why. Well, yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> And as we peel and slice them, let's think potatoes, because potatoes are a great invention, aren't they? Well, not invention, they're a great creation. And uh, you can have, um, have them as chips. Uh, and th these are not ordinary chips. These are triple cooked chips. They're cooked three times for some reason, but, that, but they are good. So that's my top of, of potatoes. Triple, I don't want just double cooked. It has to be triple cooked. And then... Roast potatoes with sea salt, and well, maybe some of you are going to get roast potatoes later on. Uh, some of you will be very disappointed later on, maybe, but good old roast potatoes. And then coming in at third, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to potatoes, jacket, jacket potatoes with proper butter. Uh, none of this other stuff that goes on, this sort of, I like proper butter. I know it's unhealthy, but I like the proper butter in jacket potatoes. Uh, and then um, coming in after that, in my order, anyway, is mashed potato, especially with beef gravy over it. Um, this is all this fancy stuff with cream and whatever in it. But that's okay, mashed potato. And then coming in after that is crisps. 
So they, there you go. Now you may have them in a different order. I don't know about you, but those kind of crinkled cut crisps seem to taste sometimes better than, than the other ones. I don't know why that is, but there you go, Chris. So you need potatoes. You're doing great there, Joe. Stick them in there, into, into there. And not only do you need potatoes, you need the, the right variety of potatoes, don't you, Joe? Because one of the things that you learned when you got married to me so you, was... Only, you only have Maris Piper potatoes for roast potatoes. Precisely. There's a, <laughs> my family learned a Wareham thing. So you have to have the right potato for the right thing. So it's no good having chip potatoes for mash. So, so, so Joe didn't realise this. And so you've, you've learned that, haven't you? I have. I've learned much more off of you. I want you to know that. But uh, what he doesn't know is I don't take any notice, oh, and he doesn't go. know no. what potatoes he has. <laughs> Spoil it all now. Anyway, they go in there. That's great for our, our thing. Now, you've got a harvest bag, and in your harvest bag, you need to find your potato. This is the beginning of your soup. I know that you need more than one potato, but you can get the rest yourself. Okay. So you need to find your potato. Now, in your bag, you need to find two eyes. There's two eyes in your bag. Oh. And you need to peel your, the back of the eyes and stick them on to your potato. And it will look like that, OK? So there's two eyes in your bag. Don't worry about the teardrops yet. We're not doing the tears yet. Don't worry about the onion yet. We're going to do that later. You need a potato with the eyes on. Okay? Because potatoes have eyes. Yeah? So stick your eyes on your potato. How are we doing? I know they're very fiddly, but you'll be okay. Okay? Have we found our eyes for our potatoes? That's brilliant. Then just stick them on there like that. Okay? You may need your glasses to find your eyes in the bag. There you go, that's just life. Okay, right, look back towards me now. Even if you've not done it, because I'm going to explain why we're putting the eyes on the potato. And this is going to lead us in to our harvest Thanksgiving with some songs together. Because harvest time, part of the, the rhythm of our, our life, harvest times gives us an opportunity in the midst of everything else that's going on, Harvest time gives us the opportunity to stop and for us to look around, to recognise, to see, to observe, to take note of all that God has given to us and provided for us, including wonderful potatoes, but all kinds of other things that God has given to us, God has provided for us, and harvest we stop and we recognise, we look around and with thanksgiving, with gratitude, we see all that God has given to us. So later on today, when you have a meal, you may want to put your potato on the meal table with the two eyes on it, just to remind you that we need to stop and have a look around at what God has given to us. And then you could take the eyes off, don't cook the eyes, you could peel the potato, and that could be the beginning of your harvest potato and onion soup. Who knows? But listen to Psalm 67. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. God let people thank and enjoy you. Then the earth will yield its harvest. Our God, our God will richly bless us. Shall we stand together?
and give thanks to the Lord. If you're online with us, let's give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. His love endures forever For the life that's been reborn His love endures forever Sing praise, sing praise Sing praise, sing praise Forever God is faithful
And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness And Creator God, God of the harvest, forgive our moments of ingratitude, the spiritual blindness that prevents us from appreciating the wonder of your grace. Forgive us for taking without giving, reaping without sowing. Open our eyes to see, our lips to praise, our hands to share. God of faithfulness, your generous love, supplies us with the fruits of the earth in their seasons. Give us grace to be thankful for your gifts, to use them wisely and to share our plenty with others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, please uh, sit down. And uh, you haven't got to worry about it yet, but... Uh, uh, we're going to find them in our bags in a moment. But of course, uh, if this is going to be um, potato and onions, we need to do onions. Josh, in, the, in uh, the bowl under there are some onions. There you go. You need to peel the onion and chop the onion. You don't need to worry about that because while Josh is doing the onions, we are going to watch a video. Uh, from BMS World Mission, and uh, it's called Jay's Story, and uh, Jay lives in the Middle East, and uh, we're going to press the buttons now, and we're going to watch this video about Jay's story. I saw Jesus 2,000 years ago. I was watching a vision. It wasn't like a dream. I was there with them. I saw he had 12 students. I saw him healing people, preaching. I hadn't read the Bible, but I saw it happening. When I woke up from the vision, I went to my neighbor, who I knew was a Christian. I told her my story, and she fell to the ground and couldn't say a word. She gave me a Bible and opened it in Matthew. It was unbelievable. What I read, that is what I had seen. In that moment, something inside me changed. The next two weeks were the best two weeks of my life. I was in a very hard situation, and my situation did not change, but I changed. My life started from that moment. I didn't tell anyone I was a Christian because I was afraid. Two years later, I moved countries. I tried every church, but they refused to baptize me. It's an Islamic country. If you change from Islam to Christianity, it really costs lives. I was learning the Bible by myself and searching for eight years. Then God found me a private teacher. It was a miracle. I learned and I started telling my family. I started with my brother. He accepted Jesus. Then I told my older sister, she accepted Jesus. Most of my family are Christians now. After that, we started this small ministry. We're helping people who are in need. We do work here and in my home country. In my home country, so many people became Christians, like 1,200 people. When the neighbors saw this, they tried to harm these people, but the Christians didn't care, even if it cost them their lives. I don't know exactly what will happen, but I want to serve God.
Oh, what a great story, and we're going to hear some more stories, and we're going to hear some of the uh, prayers uh, and some of the things that people across the world are asking us to pray for this harvest time. But um, we're going to do a um, I Will Stand World Church quiz, aren't we, Josh? That's all switched on, I think. And, yeah, we are. Uh, yeah, we are going to. That's great, because you're going to do the... I'm going to press the buttons, we're going to do the questions, and we're going to work out together. You can discuss things amongst yourselves if you want. The answers to these questions. So the first question is... Awesome, yeah. So the first question is, how many people around the world today follow Jesus? Now, you've got three options to make it a bit easier. So is it more than 2 billion, more than 3 billion, or more than 5 billion? You can have a second to have a think, discuss it amongst yourselves, and then we'll get the answer. Have a guess if you don't know. I mean, no matter what, that is a massive number. So. It's a good number. And... Our answer. So it is, we've got it on the screen, A, more than 2 billion people. So if you're ever feeling like there's not many Christians around, know that there's 2 billion of them around walking around somewhere. you just got to find them. So question two, uh, there are places around the world where fewer than 1% of people know Jesus. Uh, which, of, which is the only country listed below where, that, where this isn't the case? Sorry. So is it Thailand, Afghanistan? Tunisia or Kosovo? That's a tricky one. You might not have even heard of all those countries. Awesome. So the answer to that one is, once the question comes up, so it's not Thailand, it's not any of those. It is Kosovo. Give yourself a mark if you D, D Kosovo. At the end, we will be asking for a show of hands about how many scores you've got. Okay. So be keeping track. Okay, question three. Which country has the highest number of different religions practiced? Is it Brazil, South Korea, the UK, or the USA? Have a discussion. It's quite good being the quiz master because I've got the answer in front of me, so I can just tell you this question's easy because I've got the answer. So, Okay, so the answer to that one is... South Korea. It's interesting. You get bonus points if you can name them all. Okay, question four. Uh, which place has the smallest number of different religions? Is it the Vatican City? Afghanistan? Fiji? Or Iraq? Well, you may learn something. You may have to go and find out more about some of these places, you see? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the answer to that one is the Vatican City. It wasn't a trick question. If you're not sure what the Vatican City is, you can go home and look it up and find out later. There you go. Awesome. Okay, question number five. We're pretty much halfway through. Question number five is, in many countries, numbers of Christians are expected to rise. But can you guess the region where the number of Christians is expecting to fall? So is it? North America, Europe, the Middle East and North Africa, or the Sub-Saharan Africa? Have a little chat, try and work it out. And the answer to question five is, let's get through this. Okay, so it's not North America. That's probably what I would have gone for. It's Europe. B, if you've said Europe, you would have got that one right. Anthony, would you have known any of these so far? Oh, do you think? definitely. <laughs> Full marks over here at the front. That's good to hear. I've got good the answers hear. here. <laughs> I'm just pressing the button. I just, I'm worried about the onion and potato soup or the potato and onion soup or whatever it's called. So uh, anyway. It's smelling good up there. So, okay, uh, question number six. More importantly, would you have known the answers? <laughs> yeah, all of oh, them. Oh, well, yeah. I guess all right then. Don't okay. test me there if you see me afterwards. Sure. Okay, question number six. BMS World Mission was founded because of William Carey's vision to share the gospel with people all over the world. But do you know how many languages Carey translated the Bible into? Is it two, four, six? Is that all of them? Yeah, two, four, or six. I think I'd even struggle to translate it into English half the time, so it's impressive no matter what. Baptist history going on here. 
Okay, the answer to question six is six languages. And there you go, there are the, I'm not going to try and pronounce those, but those are the ones that he translated into. There you go. And I think it's our last question, isn't it? Ah, oh, last question. Okay, question seven. At BMS supporters continue Kerry's legacy by sharing the love of Jesus all over the world. Do you know how many countries BMS works in today? How many countries? Is it over 15? Over 25? Over 30? Those are, those are all of them. Okay. Have a, have a chat. What do you think? Okay, so the answer is... Over 30 countries. There you go. That is impressive. So what I'd love to do is... Can you put, your, put both your hands up in the air and put your score on your hands? I'd love to see how many we got. I don't want any... There, there wasn't Some even 10, 10 questions, 10 down James. the front here. We haven't done 10 questions. So and, if you're, you and if you're watching online, you can put it down in the comments as well, how many you got out of seven. Yes. Awesome. We hope. And uh, the, the, the bonus prize is you can come get another potato later on if you've got ten. If you've got ten. <laughs> so, okay. We're going to sing a harvest hymn together. Let's stand together. Let's do that. Let's stand and we'll sing together. We plow the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. But it is red and watered by God's almighty hand. He sends the snow. This Harvest Sunday, as we bring our gifts, as we bring our offerings to you, generous God, we know that all we have is yours. Save us from the delusion of believing that it is ours. Save us from our possessiveness, that your grace may abound in all things at all times. God of yesterday, today and tomorrow, God of seed time and harvest, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, bless us and strengthen us to live and bear good fruit to your praise and glory. Amen. Please sit down and, um, yeah, Ruth's going to come and join me up here because we're going to hear from Ruth in a few minutes' time and... Um, we're, we're, we're making our soup. So, Ruth, over there in that, that, that jug is that, that that's salt, but in the jug. That's the jug. Are you okay? If you'd like to pour, pour, that is stock, apparently, for the, for the soup. We'll pour that into here, just like that. Or you can give it a stir if you feel we need to give it a stir. You can do that. And um, I, I quite like the two-layer brown gravy myself. But there you go. We'll stir it up in one go. And we'll stick it into there. Like that, that's, that's wonderfully done. And uh, we're going to cook that somehow, some point, some way, and stir that up. And uh, uh, we're, we're thinking, 
about people around the world during this harvest time. Let me read to you. It says this, from people living in other parts of the world, some only living in North Africa, I miss my family a lot, but I pray that they would accept me as I am, just as I accept them as they are. And we're asked this harvest time to pray for people who have been rejected by their families because they've chosen to follow Jesus. Or here is this person living in the Middle East, pray for me to serve God in the right way, wherever he wants. Uh, Pray for isolated Christians. Pray that they would find other believers who would encourage them. We look around in this building this morning, there's a whole gang of us here, but for others across the world today, they're on their own and they're isolated. Here's what somebody from North Africa prays for. Pray that God gives us the wisdom and patience to answer the questions of those who come to us because sometimes they are really angry with us. And so we're asked to pray uh, for courageous Christians sharing good news in hard places. Well, John, if you could put my pictures back up, that would be great because we're uh, going to uh, find in our harvest bags uh, the onion. And uh, when you, of course, cut an onion, it it makes you cry unless you do what that lady's doing in the picture Then you put your goggles on. That stops you crying with the onion. But if you look in your bag, you will find some tears. You peel the back of your tears, you can stick them on your onion, like this, I'm going to give you 30 seconds, so get on with it, find your tears, peel the back of them so they're sticky, and you can put your tears on your onion, so you've got eyes on your potato, and you've got tears on your onion, okay? So quickly do that, find that. Okay, you've done that, we've done found the tears, yeah? Sticking them on the onion now. What's this you do is when you go home, you put your potato on your meal table. We have some food later on today, whenever that is. And you remember, let's look around with Thanksgiving. But the tears on the onion remind us that at harvest time, we, we, we feel something of the pain and the need and the greed and the brokenness. That The tears are harvest tears in our fallen world. And that's really important for us, to not just uh, be rejoicing, we want to rejoice, but also to be thinking and praying for, for the brokenness, for the pain in this fallen world. And we're being asked to... Um, you have to, Can you flick my... Not my, my clicker's not working here, John. Can you move that on, one? There you go. That was good. We're going to go to this. We're going to listen and watch Kay's story because BMS World Mission is saying, this harvest time, will you stand with Christians across the world, but especially for those who are Christians in really difficult, hard places? Here goes. I made a promise that I would not let any Christians live in my area, nor would I let any church nearby survive. I was born into an orthodox Hindu family. I joined an extremist Hindu group and my life's main goal was to catch Christians and beat them up. One day, I met a man and he asked me, why are you doing this? Why are you attacking people who have not done anything to you? And 
He gave me a New Testament and said, why don't you read it? I started reading the New Testament and then almost every day I wanted to read that book. I saw how, how Jesus taught his disciples to pray and I learned to pray like that. And then one day I read, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? And it hit me. After that, I secretly started meeting with the Christians and learning from them. My village discovered I'd become a Christian and they tried to throw me out. They separated from me and said, we will not give you water to drink and we will not associate with you. It's, uh, it's been more than 20 years and I'm still separated from some of my village, but now out of 30 families living here, 22 families have come to know Jesus. And I pray that one day it will become an entirely Christian village. I also now oversee 150 small groups in my region. I know that following the Lord is not easy. I've suffered persecution and had terrible things done to me, but in all of that, I, I have hope. The Lord Jesus came into my life, taking me from persecution to praise. He's everything to me. He is life. I pray that I will be able to complete the vision that, that God has given me to reach out to as many people as I can. So it's not always easy being a disciple of Jesus, not easy in our own country, uh, sometimes not easy in our own families, but there's loads and loads of people across the world where it's really, really, really difficult being uh, a follower of Jesus and BMS World Mission are asking us to remember them in our prayers and to support the work that's going on across the world as we encourage and strengthen disciples, some of them in really, really hard difficult places. Now Ruth's here not just to do an excellent job with the, the, the stock for the soup, done an excellent job with that, but also because we're going to talk BMS partners here in the church, aren't we? So yeah. if you want to pick that mic up from under there, that would be great. Yep. And uh, John, we're going to put some pictures up on the screen, I think. There you go. Tell us about our new, because okay. some of these are new partners. This person isn't a new person. No, nope, we've okay. known Judy Tell us about well. Judy. Um, are you going to click for me? Or I will I... click for you. I'll see if it's going okay. to work. There it is working. Okay. Yep. Go back to Judy. But there's Judy. Okay, so as a church, we've partnered with Judy since 1998. So um, hopefully Judy's face is familiar to many of you. Um, Judy's background is that she's a children's nurse. She works in northern Thailand in the city of Chiang Mai. And her main role is working in Hope Home, which is a home for children with learning and physical disabilities. Some of the children are there long term, um, and some of them are there as a, a foster placement. Many of the children are well, but would be very vulnerable. Um, but they do need intensive care and support in order to be able to access school, in order to be able to access the normal kind of activities of daily life. And if the children are unwell and need to spend time in hospital, then um, usually someone from Hope Home would spend that time with them in hospital just to support them in their basic care whilst they're receiving care from the hospital in order to, to recover. And that's been particularly important over the last 18 months in lockdown if children have had to go into hospital and someone has spent time with them there. And then just want to give you a tiny flavour of what life is like in Chiang Mai. So we can go to the next okay. slide. This is the Water Festival, which is held each year in April in Chiang Mai. It's a crazy, crazy time. Basically, if you go outside of your house, you're likely to get absolutely drenched. 
Um, I've been there at this time, and we got soaked. <laughs> well, I think we should do this. <laughs> I mean, when Judy comes, because she's going to come and see us, isn't she, next year, I think we should she have is. a water festival. Yep. That'd be great fun. <laughs> it's held at the, the hottest, driest time of year, so water is in short supply. But in order to kind of push the gods to, to start sending rain, um, they throw water. Okay. Um, so, yeah, beware That's in Chiang Mai if you're there in April. Don't take anything out with you that you mind if it gets wet. So that's our first person we've got to remember. It's Judy. So that's Judy. Okay, now, it's really easy to remember these three people because they, they all have the same letter beginning their name, don't they? They all begin with J, yep. There you go. Here's so the next So our next person. person is Joy Ransom. Okay. So, Joy, this is a, a brand new, but also maybe uh, some slightly familiar... Um, link because Joy works with Kisk Equip in Basi Sahar and Wendy and Simon who we've been yes. linked with for several years they also worked in Basi Sahar with Kisk Equip and Joy, June, Joy joined them sorry that was difficult to say Joy joined them a couple of years ago and Wendy and Simon have now returned to the States um, but Kisk Equip continues, and you're going ahead on my slides. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Kisk Equip continues. They link with 15 um, schools in the Lamjung district um, in Nepal. She works as a teacher, and her aim is to work with the teachers of the local village schools to try and enhance and improve the quality of education amongst the village schools in Nepal. So as part of that, she visits um, all the different schools um, that they link with. And for many of those, she can go by road. But this is the, the road to one of the schools that she visited recently during the monsoon. Um, so quite a challenge. And yeah, the monsoon can last from May through to the end of September. So it's a good number of months of just coping with mud and wet and humidity and heat. Um, and that's the kind of um, conditions that Joy would have to, to travel on to get to some of the schools. But for some of the children, okay. we'll go to the next Press slide the next now. Button. I don't want to get it wrong, <laughs> anybody. So, for the, uh, some of the go. children, the journey to school can be even more hazardous. Um, now, you may think that... We should do that here. <laughs> You may think that a zip wire is great fun, um, but if you've got to pull yourself across on a rope to get across a river, which is um, a, a lot of distance below you, um, and not you lose your flip-flops in the, in the process, and arrive at school ready to work, it can be um, a bit of a challenge for some of the children getting to school in some of the more remote areas and remote villages if they're travelling in to their school from, from their village. So anybody here who moans about going to school, the journey to school? Have a zip wire. Could be like that. <laughs> so we've got Judy. We've got Judy Cook. We've got Joy. We've got Joy Ransom. And the next J is Jane Edwards. So this is a brand new link, brand new area, and I think quite an exciting area of work. Jane is a lawyer. She works with BMS in Mozambique. Um, she works in the, in the city of Beira, I hope I'm saying that right, Beira, which is a major city in Mozambique, and she's been there since 2017. Okay, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, she's not able to directly practice law in Mozambique because she's not registered, able to register there, but she works with an organisation called the AMAC, which, if you translate that into Portuguese, sorry, I haven't told you what it stands for, it's the Mozambican Christian Lawyer Association, which, when translated into Portuguese, gets shortened to AMAC. And this is the team that she works with in Beira. Okay, next slide, please. One of the main areas of, of work that she'd be supporting in is helping to educate local people about their rights and what they can, can sort out legally um, with support, with legal aid, and what AMAC may be able to help them with. And as part of that, they hold um, education events in 
local churches, sometimes in the marketplace, and they will just invite people and talk with people about um, the areas where maybe AMC, AMAC would be able to help them. One of the main areas that Jane has specialised in is to do with um, legal rights around land. And if you lose your land in Mozambique, that may well mean that you lose the ability to feed your family. So it's a, a crucial area that, that she's able to support and help with. And it's done quite a bit of research and, and um, developing work in terms of land rights and making sure that people um, yeah, have, have the justice in that situation and in that country. And then finally... Um, just again a flavour of the country of Mozambique. It has been hit by some very severe cyclones. Um, a couple of years ago they were devastated by the, the worst cyclone that has ever been recorded to hit the east coast of Africa. Um, and then earlier this year they were hit by another cyclone, not so severe, but um, compounding the damage that had been done two years ago. And as in any country, in any situation, it's always the poor and the marginalised who are the worst affected and the least able to recover. So, again, by providing legal support and, and legal information and education and legal aid, um, AMAC are able to help and support people sorting out the mess and the devastation that has been caused in their country. So, it's Judy, Joy... Jane, let's be praying for them. We're going, to hear, we're going to hear some more about them in the coming weeks and months and we uh, uh, will pray for them and uh, hear what's going on. Let me read this to you about a 14-year-old believer in Asia. We memorise a verse every Sunday. I memorise this verse uh, and so everywhere I go, I am not afraid. It helps me a lot. And um, this... this 14-year-old follower of Jesus went to school in a place where you're not meant to or allowed to be a Christian, but she's a Christian there, and she says that she's brought two friends to Jesus because many believers around the world don't have access to a, a Christian community, to a church, or even to their own Bible. And so when they meet up together, they may just have one Bible between them all. And so uh, memorising Bible passages is, is a, a key way in which they can keep God's word into their hearts and lives. And so uh, BMS, a, a supported BMS church community in Asia, memorises a different Bible verse every week. And B, 14-year-old believer in Asia, new believer who is part of this church but lives in a different village where everyone she knows is, a, is Buddhist, she's memorised the verse from Isaiah, which if you look in your bags, you'll find it, the memory verse. And John, can you find my, my pictures again, if that's possible? So we're going to put up on the screen, we're going to say this verse together. If we can find that, that would be great. Found the verse in there. Got the verse? I'm not sure if we can get it back onto the screen or not. You found the verse, yeah? Got it? Should we stand together? And we're going to say these words together from Isaiah 41. And this is this memory verse that uh, B, this 14-year-old believer in Asia has learnt. And, um, and we're... we're, we're Learn it. That's okay. You can go through the whole thing. It's going to take you ages. Don't worry about that, John. That's fine. Uh, those online will hear. It's Isaiah 41, verse 10. Uh, they hear us say it, and then they can look that verse up. So we'll say together. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And that's a great verse for us to memorise uh, and take into the rest of this week. And maybe, actually, there's some hard, difficult places we're going to find ourselves in this week. And Isaiah 41, verse 10, could be 
a great verse for you. Thanks, John. It's for you. We're going to uh, finish with a couple of songs. This one is um, a, a classic Graham Kendrick song about social justice called Beauty for Brokenness.
He's coming on the clouds and kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare His praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb who was slain. For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power, fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power, fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Please sit down. And so to remind you as we go, we're going to take our potato with the eyes and we're going to look around with thankful, grateful hearts this harvest time. But also, we don't ignore the need and the pain and the, the brokenness in our world. We come praying to God that things, that lives will be transformed and changed. And as we uh, share and bring gifts you may want to get some gifts for the food bank. You may want to look up some more stuff. Go to the BMS World uh, website and you can uh, find out more information about how we can stand with, pray for, give and support believers in hard, difficult places. So, potato and onion. You mix it all together. You add a bit of seasoning in there, apparently. And then you serve up. Wonderful. You can give me a round of applause if you want. I don't mind. So, um, <laughs> potato and onion harvest soup. A blessing this harvest time. God the Father who created the world, give you grace to be wise stewards of his creation. God the Son, who redeemed the world, inspire you to go out as labourers into his harvest. God the Holy Spirit, whose breath fills the whole of creation, help you to bear his fruit 
of love, joy, and peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Speak to me, my heart responds.